St. Eustine Popovich on the Theanthropic Mystery of the Church. Excerpt from Humanistic Ecumenism. The teaching of the Orthodox Church on the God-Man Christ formulated the following about heretics through the Holy Apostles, the Holy Fathers, and the Holy Synods. Heresies are not a church, nor can they be a church. Therefore, they cannot have holy mysteries, especially the sacrament of the Eucharist, the sacrament of sacraments. Precisely because the Holy Eucharist is everything and all in the church, even the God-man, Lord Jesus Christ, and the church itself, and everything in general of the God-man. Intercommunion, that is to say, participating with heretics in the Holy Sacraments, and especially in the Holy Eucharist, is the most shameless betrayal of our Lord Jesus Christ, Judas' betrayal. It is especially the betrayal of the whole of the one and unique Church of Christ, of the holy tradition of the Church. One would have to rid oneself of one's Christ-like way of thinking and one's conscience before the various sacraments, before their holy meanings, and the holy commandments in order to do this. First of all, we would have to ask ourselves on what ecclesiology and on what theology of the Church is intercommunion based. This is because all of Orthodox theology is not founded on or based on intercommunion, but upon the theanthropic reality of communion, that is to say, upon theanthropic communion itself. The idea of intercommunion is contradictory in itself and totally inconceivable for the Orthodox Catholic conscience. The second fact, indeed a sacred fact of Orthodox faith, is the following. In Orthodox teaching about the Church and the sacraments, the single most unique mystery is the Church itself, the body of the God-man Christ, so that she is the only source and the content of all divine sacraments. Outside of this theanthropic and inclusive mystery of the Church, the pan-mystery itself, there are no and cannot be any mysteries. Therefore, there can be no intercommunion of mysteries. Consequently, we can only speak about mysteries within the context of this unique pan-mystery, which is the Church. This is because the Orthodox Church, as the body of Christ, is the source and the foundation of the sacraments and not the other way around. The mysteries, or sacraments, cannot be elevated above the Church or examined outside the body of the Church. An excerpt from his essay, Highest Value and Last Criterion in Orthodoxy. Christ sums up all of his teaching and work in his theanthropic person and interprets them through him. On account of this, the Apostolic Orthodox Church of Christ sums up all of Christianity in the life-giving person of the God-man Christ, instruction, truth, justice, goodness, and life. The person of the God-man Christ is the Church's most valuable treasure. All other treasures the Orthodox Church receives as rays of the sun, from the unique Son, Christ. We must not be mistaken. Christianity is Christianity only on account of the God-man. In this lies its extraordinary meaning, value, and power. The God-man Christ, the theanthropic personality, remains with us as the Church. The Church is the Church only through the God-man and in the God-man. The New Testament can be summed up in one, this one comprehensive truth. The God-man is the essence the purpose, the meaning, and the essential value of the Church. He is its soul, its heart, and its life. He is the Church in its entire theanthropic fullness. The Church is nothing other than the God-man Christ projected through all the centuries. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. The God-man is the head of the body of the Church, as such, he is also the Savior of the body of the Church. It is only through him, the unique and undivided God-man, 
that the church remains one, unique, and undivided. As the God-man, he holds together the whole body of the church in one undivided unity of grace, truth, and life. Through him, the body of the church grows and receives all aspects of divine life. The body of the church grows according to the measure of the stature of the theanthropic fullness of Christ, since everything has been made through him and in him. With the power of his grace, he mystically, sacramentally, leads all the members of the church to the theanthropic creator, since the meaning and purpose of the church is for everyone to be led by divine human faith to the measure of the fullness of Christ, namely to be refashioned theanthropically. The church, through its apostles, martyrs, confessors, holy fathers, and its faithful members has, more than any other thing, unhesitatingly confessed and defended the God-human hypostasis. The church, while showing great mercy toward sinners, has always implacably and decisively condemned and rejected those who in whatever way have denied, rejected, or disfigured the divinity and humanity of Christ. The Church is forever eager to joyfully walk towards apocalyptic martyrdom in order to defend and preserve the theanthropic person of Christ. What is the essence of orthodoxy? It is the God-man Christ. Everything that is orthodox has a divine human character. Knowledge, the senses, the will, the mind, morality, dogma, philosophy, and life. Divine humanity is the only category in which all the manifestations of orthodoxy are received and fully operate. In all of creation, God occupies the first place, man the second. God leads while man is led. God acts and man cooperates. God does not act transcendentally. He is not the abstract God of deism, but rather the God of the most immediate historic reality, the God of revelation, the God who became man and lived within the categories of our human existence, while appearing everywhere as absolute holiness, goodness, wisdom, justice, and truth. As the perfect God-man, nothing within the categories of human life remain unknown. It is precisely for this reason that he became man, although remaining God, in order to give to human nature divine power, which would lead humanity to an intimate, divine human union with God. This divine power continuously acts within his divine human body, that is, the Church, by uniting men with God through a holy life and grace. The Church is nothing other than that wondrous divine human organism where, through cooperation of divine grace and the free activity of man, The entire man, and everything that is human, save sin, is immortalized and refashioned in a divine human way. In the divine human organism of the Church, each believer constitutes a dynamic constituent cell of the organism and lives by the life-giving divine human power of Christ. For someone to be a member of the Church— This signifies that he is incorporated into the God-human Christ and has become united into his one body as an organic member of his divine human body. In a word, the member of the church becomes divinely human in the fullness of his human personality. When he has succeeded in this, man arrives at the divine human unity of life and experiences the living and immortal realization that he has passed from death to life. He continuously experiences throughout his entire being that the Church, a divine human organism, is the God-man extended into the ages. Christ, as a divine human person, is unparalleled, but as theanthropic power and life he continuously reappears in every Christian, since every Christian is an organic member of his divine human body, the Church. Now, a reading of the Orthodox Church as Continuous Pentecost. 
Who is Jesus Christ? Who is both God and human? What in him is God and what is human? How do we recognize the God in him and the human? What did God grant us in the person of Jesus? All of this is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. In other words, he reveals the truth about Jesus, about the God in him and the human being and about what he bestowed upon us. And this infinitely surpasses what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have ever felt. Through his incarnate life on earth, Jesus established his theanthropic body, the church, and through this prepares the world for the advent, the life, and the activity of the Holy Spirit in the body of the church, as the soul of this body. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended from heaven onto the theanthropic body of the church and has always remained within it as the life-giving soul of this body. This visible theanthropic body of the church was constituted by the holy apostles with their belief in Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world and as perfect God and perfect human being. The descent of the Holy Spirit with all his activity in the theanthropic body of the church comes from Jesus and because of Jesus. Everything in the divine and human providence of our salvation has come from the divine and human person of our Lord, Jesus Christ. In the end, everything can be summed up and exists in terms of his theanthropicity, even the activity of the Holy Spirit. All the dynamism of the Spirit in the world is inseparable from the theanthropic prowess of our Lord Jesus Christ in his salvation of the world. Pentecost, with all the eternal blessings of the triune divinity and of the Holy Spirit himself, defines the church of the holy apostles, that is, the church of the holy apostolic faith, of the holy apostolic tradition, of the holy apostolic succession, and of everything apostolic, which is theanthropic. The holy day of the Spirit which dawned at Pentecost continues without interruption in the Orthodox Church with the untold fullness of the divine gifts and life-giving powers. Everything in the church exists in the Holy Spirit, from the most minute to the most stupendous. When a priest senses in church and asks our Lord Jesus Christ to send down the grace of the Holy Spirit, and when the inexpressible miracle of Pentecost is repeated at the consecration of a bishop, on whom is bestowed the fullness of grace, These are obvious testimonies to the fact that the Holy Spirit comprises the whole of the life of the Church. There can be no doubt that our Lord Jesus Christ is with the Holy Spirit in the Church and that the Church is with the Holy Spirit in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is the head and the body of the Church, and the Holy Spirit is its soul. From the beginning of the theanthropic dispensation of our salvation, the Holy Spirit has been linked to the foundation of the Church, that is, with the foundation of the body of Christ, who created the incarnation of the Word. In reality, every holy sacrament and all the divine virtues are a holy spirituality. Through these the Holy Spirit comes to us and into us, He comes in substance, which means truly and actually, with all the might of His divine energies. He's the riches of the divinity. He's the full complement of grace. He's the grace and the life of every being. He's the eternal and testamental gospel. Our Lord dwells within us with the Holy Spirit, and we in Him. This is in itself is evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Together with the Holy Spirit, we live in Christ and He in us. Indeed, we know this from the Spirit I gave you. St. Basil the Great was inducted by the cherubim into the theanthropic mystery of the Church and proclaimed the most veritable and joyous message. The Holy Spirit is the architect of the Church of God. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, 
of St. Eustine of Chile, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us. Amen.